Hi everyone, this is going to be a very long video going in depth with the camera quality and good and bad things that you get with the Nokia Lumia 920. I've been given this for the last couple of weeks, tested it out pretty intensively and I've been testing it against, against my Apple iPod Touch, the 5th generation 32GB one with a camera on the front and on the back. So whenever you see a video where you see this, the Nokia in it, that has been filmed with the iPod Touch. Whenever you see a video with the iPod Touch in it, it's got its little kind of a case on it, then that's been filmed with this. And we're just, I'm gonna go over the, the, there isn't a clear winner, that's what I say. If, if, if you're wanting to know the answer for this, there isn't a case of like, this is better than this. It's not. It has some good things, it has some bad things, it has some good things I want implemented in other things, but uh, it's more I have to show you and for you to decide which is better for you. So the first thing I'm going to look at is the video quality you get on the rear camera. So I always get confused by which is the front and which is the rear. Is the rear the one that faces back to you or is the rear the one which is on the back facing towards the scene or is that or is the rear the one that faces back the way or or I always get confused. So, so what I'll just say we've got your ear camera uh, your face camera, so that's the same one, your face camera, and then you've got your scene camera, the one which you take actual photos with. Your selfie camera, and your port your panoramic camera, whatever it is. Uh, okay, so what I've done is I've uploaded this in its full resolution. So I'm recording this on a Mac, which is a 27 inch Mac, which has got higher than uh, 1080 resolution. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave the video files in their native resolution, so I'm not expanding them, not getting them smaller or anything like that, just leaving them as they are. So if, you want, if you've got a 27 inch Mac, you can expand the video so it's at its full resolution as well. Uh, so the first video which I got, uh, we'll just have a look at this one here. Um, I was at a basketball game, I uh, just went in there to have a look at it. So I, I was recording with both the iPod and the Lumia at the same time. And this is just kind of looking in, so it's a fairly low light, uh, it's, you know, kind of a halogen lighting? Nah, it's probably not even a halogen lighting, it's just some weird light. But you notice the white balance is a little bit all over the place. There's also a jello effect which I'm really feeling from the optically stabilized video footage which I'm finding a bit strange. Um, if we compare this to the effect that we get with the iPod Touch, so exactly the same video, I'll just put that here now. So it started at the same time, so there you can see with the iPod Touch I'm taking a video with all of the uh, Nokia Lumia and I go to the exact same place. So there's a much warmer tone the white balance is kind of staying the same, but the vibration we are noticing. So I'm pretty much holding these cameras one above each other, uh, so there's nothing changing. What you do see, though, is a lot of lens flare from the lights on the iPod Touch. Didn't get any of that with the Nokia Lumia. So the, the quality of the glass in front of the Lumia or something has got rid of all of the, the flare or the glare that you get from any of the lights, which I think is, is pretty good. Now this next shot here, what we're looking at is its response from going outside to bright to inside to dark. So this first shot, you can I, I don't even need to look at the file here, I know this is with the uh, uh, Nokia Lumia because the white balance again is all over the place. The speed of its change of um, exposure from outside to inside was very fast and I was pretty impressed with that. So that's good, going from outside to inside, uh, but colour wise Bit, bit off all over the place. Here's exactly the same with the iPod Touch. As you can see there, I'm pointing to the Nokia Lumia. So it's both done at exactly the same time. And as you go in, pretty much almost instantaneous uh, exposure change. There's a lot more noise and grain to the Nokia, but it is a brighter and I would say a more accurate white balance uh, from going from outside to inside there. And certainly frame rate and everything didn't have any problem with that footage there whatsoever. Now here's something you've got to be very careful with. For some reason the default setting on the Nokia is only 720p, not 1080. And for some reason, I don't know why, but it made, whenever I went outside for this shot, I was using the scene camera, it decided to go for 720. So it seems like I'm going to have to double check my my camera, my video settings every time I start it up. So here's what happened here. 
Uh, okay, so that's me just finished a horrendous game of uh, basketball. Oh, I've got sweat dripping at my ears. Uh, and I'm just coming out of the um, court place with the Nokia and the uh, Apple iPod Touch. So just now, as you can see, this is the Nokia and this is the Apple there. Uh, so again, if, if you're blogging this way, I have no idea whether this would be, because I can't see myself because I don't have it the other way. But uh, what there is just now is a beautiful blue sky. So whichever one can really show off the blue sky, doesn't matter because I'm blogging myself. So maybe that if one can detect that the other one, is, or that, that they're looking at faces that it exposes for that, that'd be good. Anyway, let's flip them around and see what they look like there. So yeah, the certainly a wider angle view lens on the Nokia than the Apple, much more detail in the sky, however, not as much detail in the shadows. Okay, so just now filming like this again, uh, and I was just about to go home, and for some reason this one's just turned off again. Right, starting again, uh, and although I was just about to go home, uh, there is a fantastic view of the two oh and mist off the sea i don't know if you can see over there but there's just a mist coming off you can see with one camera and a little bit with the other but over behind me over there we've got the fourth road and the fourth rail bridge which look awesome anyway so here's a test to see um how good the photos are in this what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the exposure settings on both camera whenever i'm taking the photos in fact what i'll do first of all is i shall just turn you so it was mm. Okay, so if we're shooting panoramic like this, we've got the apple and then this one. And so yeah, an amazing uh, sky just now and a storm was brewing over there. So the the Nokia Lumia totally rocks for the sky. Brilliant sky details. Cycles going past. Certainly it looks much more vibrant colours on the Nokia Lumia. Uh, and it does definitely have that image stabilisation going on there. So anyway, that's the view over to the bridges. Let's now see what they look like in photos. Okay, so now let's have a closer look at the actual image files that we're getting from the two different cameras. Uh, on the left, we've got, I think, hold on, let me just double check, that is the Nokia, when it says WP, uh, that is the Nokia image. And the iPod is obviously much more of a square image compared to the Nokia. And straight away you can see there's definitely some different colours going on all over the place here. So the iPod Touch is around about a 5 megapixel camera and quite a square file for that. This is the HDR version, so straight in the, straight in the camera you, it can do just a normal photo and it also can record an HDR. In fact, if I show you the difference between the two of them, uh, you'll see there's a little bit of ex exposure or added exposure in the kind of darker areas and the, instead of the totally blown out white, we've got a little bit of colour there, but we'll just uh, not need to see that one at the moment. Uh, so I'm going for the best image out of each. And uh, so width-wise, yeah, we've got a much wider lens on the Nokia uh, Lumia. Uh, it's also more of a uh, shape of like 18 by 10, 18 by 9, I think. In fact, we'll just double check. So indeed, the Nokia is shooting at a 16 by 9 ratio, and the iPod is, a, I can't quite figure it out, it's certainly not 2 by 3, 5, point, 5 by 7, no, 8.5 by 11, no, not even that either. Doesn't seem to be an exact number there, so I'm not too sure what uh, the ratio is, but it's, it's fairly square, or close enough to uh, 5 by 7. However, in camera, you can change the Nokia's aspect ratio so that it is a 4x3 ratio if you so desire. And that's the way if you want to get the full 8 megapixels. Because whenever you're doing it at this uh, 18 or 16x9, it looks like it's only about 7 megapixels. So a, a small difference going on there. Uh, and if we were to zoom in, 
And looking at the Nokia, that looks good. You can see the details of uh, the bridge and everything there. Not a problem at all. And if we go to the iPod, iPod looks a little bit sharper, uh, but the exposure seems to be a little bit lower on the iPod for that photo there, which is surprising because it normally does so much brighter uh, when indoors. But maybe that's part of the HDR uh, effect there. Both are quite grainy. You're not going to be getting a, uh, like a, a noise-free image. But uh, otherwise, not really much in it there. Now, the one thing which the Nokia Lumia doesn't or uh, doesn't have, which the iPod Touch does have, is a panoramic mode already built into the actual phone whenever you get it. I've been told that you can get a Nokia uh, that you can get a panoramic thing uh, software um, for the Lumia, but you have to go to the Nokia site and download and all that kind of stuff. If you wanted something straight out of the box then the iPod Touch has it and all you need to do on the iPod Touch click panorama and then get it roughly in position let it expose first and I need to hold it a bit more steadily now I'm just going to do a very smooth panorama of this amazing sunset and click done but with this camera I can't do that so that's the only thing now here's an interesting shot here as well so on the left we've still got the Nokia shot and on the right we've got the iPod shot now again what you might be noticing is that we've got the lens flare or the flare from the Sun on the iPod so that's something which the Nokia has done very well but my goodness the exposures are different again these were taken at exactly the same time but with the uh, iPod, we've got so much more detail in the sky. Uh, the settings that it used was 1 2,300th th of a second, or 2,300th of a second, f2.4 and ISO 32 on the iPod. On the Nokia, the ISO didn't go below 100, and it's only 2,000th of a second, and it's still f2. So it's like it couldn't go fast enough to get the detail of the sky in that shot. Interesting. Now this is quite a telling shot here. On the left we've got the Nokia Lumia again. Now that looks vibrant and pretty good colours there. On the right we've got the iPod and that's not looking quite as good. That's looking a bit more faded out. It looks like it needs a bit of clarity and vibrance boost but even then it's still... oh god no still not really giving as much detail as the Nokia Lumia. So the Lumia here is now looking better in the photo. Hmm. And also the wider angle I'm liking a bit more as well. So, interesting. Going for the more panoramic shot, the, the extra wideness of the lens of the Lumia really suits my type of shooting. I think that looks beautiful. Meanwhile, the iPod uh, front-facing camera, the scene-facing camera, is not giving nearly as good a shot as uh, the Nokia, certainly in these shots here. If we zoom in, in on the details, uh, that is obviously the Nokia, and that's looking nice. If we go to the iPod, uh, it's looking a little bit blurry, a little bit fuzzy, just not, not great. I, I I would definitely critique that saying it's not very sharp, it's not very vibrant. Uh, if we put the clarity up, the vibrance up, maybe a little bit of the shadows up. Ooh, it still doesn't really go anywhere. Highlights down. So both both sets are slightly editable. Uh, you can do a little bit of work on these JPEG shots there. Uh, but straight straight away, definitely, I think the, the Nokia Lumia scene-facing camera is doing better in these shots. But what it doesn't have is it doesn't have an inbuilt panoramic software. I'll go into that in a little bit later, because I have done some panos, which you're about to see soon, but oh dear dear, uh, but to give you an example, straight out of the box, straight out of the camera, the iPod Touch allows you to do a sweeping panoramas. You just start it and you rotate the camera like that. Um, and 
uh, just depending on where you start it and it you, it's starting exposure it depends on you know how bright the rest of the image is going to be so if I started the exposure over at the bridge at the side here then that's why the sun bit is totally blown out but if I start over the sun area and I bring it around to the bridge then there's much more detail in the sky over here but and then the shadows are totally bummed out so if it's a case that you're buying something at the airport you don't have time to go on the internet and buy or sign up to a Microsoft account and Nokia account and all that kind of stuff the iPod wins here so here's some straight in camera footage here I'm shooting with the face facing camera, the one on the kind of screen side of the camera, uh, of the phone even. And as you notice, it's taken me a couple times to get the Nokia to be working, or it's just so sensitive to go on and off just by touching any part of the screen that quite a few times just by moving, I've accidentally turned it off. Okay, so this is a perfect example of a place where you really want your camera phone to really stand out from the crowd. Just now, while I'm blogging and doing the front facing camera, you can see that the Nokia Lumia is actually showing me a great image of the bridge in the background, which is awesome. However, the iPod Touch is sucking a little bit. But let's see if we can see a little bit more of it there. Uh, it looks good, but if I'm doing a video of myself, which I am just now, I'm more interested in about the brightness of myself. Also, the colour, there's definitely a difference, which I think the Apple definitely wins on. Now I'm going to put these forward to do a little video of the scene and then do some photos. Let's look at that. Again, this footage was shot at 720p. So what I've done is I've just doubled up the footage and I've expanded the 720p of the front facing camera of the Nokia up so it fills up this whole screen. So if you're watching the 27 inch Mac, you'll see it in its uh, fullest detail. I've had to compress this video a little bit for it to go onto YouTube, but you should get an idea, that certainly in comparison to, uh, to the Apple iPod Touch. Certainly uh, in the video, it seems to do very well with getting rid of the blown out highlights in the sun, which didn't do so well in the photo, strangely. Um, and just generally the clarity just looks really nice and crisp with the, the front facing camera of the Nokia Lumia. I think it really vibrant colours, deep blacks uh, and good kind of saturation everywhere. Definitely think it looks really good. Here is the front facing part of the iPod Touch, the fifth generation version. Again, if you want any more of these details, they're all in the blog down below. And as you can see, it's much more faded out, much less colourful, much less contrast image. Uh, as we go over to the sun, it seems like in video it doesn't do quite as well as it did with Lumia, or certainly it wasn't as instantaneous uh, exposure change. And also you've got that CV little dot moving around, that's the lens flare, or glare, I can never remember which, I think it's flare that one is. Uh, but generally just not looking, these were shot both at exactly the same time. But uh, just the Nokia really humps the iPod in terms of its front facing camera, that is for sure, even when this is shooting at 1080p in comparison. In the next shot you'll see in a minute, I'm actually shooting both in 1080p. What you should notice pretty quickly in this video footage is that the optical stabilization system is a wee bit weird. Also, the white balance is going all over the place. Uh, it's okay, the exposure is changing. We're, we're chasing a little bird here, but there it kind of goes green. So it's not just the white balance, it's a tint. And it's just, it's just not controlled in any way whatsoever. And also, just this uh, optical, stabilization, optical stabilization just seems to give it a weird kind of warping look, like uh, the kind of stabilization you get on YouTube in the after editing that you do on YouTube. With the iPod Touch, you can see there's a bit more kind of jitter and a bit more vibration to the movement in my hand, but it doesn't seem to really take away. Like, I think before with the optical stabilization, you look at it and go, that looks weird. Here, you just kind of go, it's a shaky shot. But there is a straight in shot of the uh, lens flare again, really noticeable on the Nikon, uh, on the uh, Apple iPod Touch, but which you don't get anything on the Nokia. So that is a very impressive thing that they've done 
with the Nokia Lumia 920 uh, lens, definitely. And also just the wide angleness of the Nokia, I think it's just much more better for these types of shots. Okay, so today I am down, uh, well, the plan was to actually head to a place called Bamburgh Castle, uh, which is down in England. And uh, on the way there, we go past a place called uh, Berwick-upon-Tweed, that's where we are just now, or just Berwick. Uh, completely lost in Berwick, don't know how to get out of here and uh, find our way down to Bamburgh Castle. But uh, just thought this is a great view. What I've done now is on the Nokia, I've downloaded the panoramic software that it's got. So I'm going to see how good it does a panorama here because here we've got a couple cool bridges and we've got a duck. Somebody also asked about the bokeh effect that you get on the lenses here. So I'm going to test it out against the iPod Touch versus the Nokia and see how well each of them do with this duck over here. Hello Mr. Duck. Okay, he's running away from me. I may not be able to get a good shot. Uh, okay, bye bye. Hello, Mr. Ducks. Come here, come here. Yes. Oh, oh, it's a bit of grass. Ah, you thought. Not impressed, are you, Mr. Duck? What about your buddy? Come here. Oh, what is this, Mr. Duck? Oh. Ah. Okay, rolling. Okay, so today we are, I've finally managed to make it down to Bamburgh Castle. Uh, just now it looks like the Nokia is actually doing a better exposure on my face, depending on which way I'm standing. But uh, Bamburgh, or, uh, well, down in Bamburgh, there's uh, the Bamburgh Castle, and it is a very cool castle. It looks like a kind of fairy tale kind of castle, if you see it in the background there. What I'll do is I'll just flip these round so you can see what it's like. But yeah, very cool. Have a look at these. Okay, both, both recording. Right, uh, just now we are just at the entrance of Bamburgh Castle, which you can probably see over there. But just now, uh, this is just in Englandshire. Uh, was it, Kim? Northam? Look at the screen to see where, where it's going. You're going to be my camera guy. Okay, in this video... Whoa, noisy birds. Uh, so what we're doing just now, we're at the Bamburgh Castle, which is in Northumberland, or in Bamburgh. We're just at the entrance of it just now, as you can see over there. It's looking very orange, blue skies, green plants, and amazingly blue sea. Pretty much, I'm just thinking just now, why would I ever go and spend time over in France or Spain when you've got water and beaches like that? Let's have a look over here. Look at that. Can you zoom in? No, I can't zoom in while filming. But wow. What a shot. So to get into the Bamburgh Castle is about £9.75 or a tenner pretty much. And uh, when you're in, you get this amazing view of the beaches down there, which looks fantastic. There's also some serious wildlife. There's people on their horses down at the beach. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, there's some peregrine... Per, is it peregrine falcons, Kim? Pere, some kind of falcon, which is pretty cool. There's also a fly in front of me. Ooh, go away. Um, and uh, just on a day like today, it's just stunning. Great for panoramic images as well. Um, but just the, uh, the 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 castle is known as the the king of castles because it's meant to be so badass. And so far, I agree with it definitely. And I'm just on the outskirts of it. I wanted to go inside in a minute. This is a tricky exposure shot here because it's both indoors with harsh light and also in a very dark location. So this is going into kind of an internal stairwell. And with the Nokia, again, you're seeing the white balance jitter around all over the place. And although this is me walking, it does give it a little bit of smoothness, but there is also still a jerkiness to the optical stabilization system on it. Bit strange. 
with Apple iPod Touch, uh, there's a lot more noise in the image. It's a, it's a very noisy image, but it's a much brighter image. And generally for me, I would choose a brighter image over a dark image because there's not really much editing you can do at all to these images. But it seems with the, with the iPod, oh, lens flare, loads of lens flare going on there. Crazy amounts of lens flare. Okay, so front or rear facing or front facing camera indoors, very low light. Uh, test to see which one is better. The Nokia definitely has some image stabilization, which is good, but white balance all over the place compared to the the Apple iPod Touch. And uh, in here, where it's definitely super low light, as you see, we're only lit by a couple of lights away up there. You can almost not see me on the Nokia whatsoever, but on the uh, iPod, it's really boosted up its ISO. So it's a grainy image, but it's a brighter image, which is kind of what, what you want. And you can like see all the stuff in the background as well. It looks good. But yeah. So the front facing camera, or the, what do you call it? Face, face facing camera, the iPod Touch definitely works better. Even when we go into a brighter room. I think. Right. One of the things that you always want about a phone in a camera is it to be one-handed operational. So for me, I can just turn it on, hold down the button, and then take a photo. Pretty fast, pretty easy, uh, and the only thing is, one hand, sometimes it, your finger goes over that because you're holding up that. But otherwise, it's easy enough to work with just one hand as easy as it is with the iPod Touch. And off. Easy. That's me now finished my time with the Nokia Lumia 920 and uh, I'm not going to be comparing it anymore against the Apple iPod Touch. But my experiences from it are that uh, it, the front facing camera for video is fantastic. Well, when I say front, it's the one that faces the scene. Uh, that is a very, very good camera, very good lens. However, the problem with the software in the camera rather than the lens is the, the white balance. It just cannot deal with that. The fact that it has no lens flare is an amazing achievement that they've done with the lens. I'm not quite sure how they've done that, but that looks... Like, I understand how they do it on like a Nikon £1,000 lens with nano crystal coating and all that kind of stuff. But on one of these little lenses, no idea. So that is very impressive. Major problem that I had with it was the panoramic software. Um, I take I took a lot of panoramics, but they all just disappeared. Seemingly, I didn't wait long enough for them to save onto the actual phone. So definitely check on the blog or put some details about what happened there um, regarding uh, doing panoramas. So for me, the iPod Touch, far easier to just grab, stick on HDR, do a panoramic, uh, and stuff like that far far more easier than the Nokia Lumia however the image quality in video for scene shots with the Lumia is beautiful but if you're doing selfies and blogging the iPod Touch does a much more better and accurate exposure for faces whenever a face is in the scene whether it's got a face recognition that it just automatically uh, sets exposure so it's better for faces I don't know, but it certainly seems that every time I was pointing it to my face, whether it's the scene camera or the front-facing camera, whoever it was, the face-facing camera, the Apple iPod Touch did a far better job at exposing and giving a more accurate white balance. Anyway, that was just my experience with it. 
I uh, hope if that helps, check the blog down below. I've put a lot more details and much more images for you to inspect at your own leisure. So hope that helps. Thank you. Bye bye.